Hey guys, it's from Chenk here, and welcome to 5th Bits, a tips, tricks, and guide video series where I explain, discuss, and demystify 5th Gen AC. Here's a quick intro for booster and generators for PvP and Verdict Day. Powering your energy-hungry war machine while giving it the speed to weave in and out of cover, boosters and generators are a crucial cornerstone for armored cores. The combination of these parts will determine how well your unit can move and how much energy will be available to use at any one time. This is particularly important in 5th gen with how many different types of movement options you have available to you and how high drain is when not in scan mode. Picking the wrong combination means you'll always be bottoming out your generator, be unable to move around, and have no energy to fire your thermal weapons. Here's a quick lowdown of what you need to know. Each of these parts are split into three categories. Boosters are divided into High XL, designed to give you a large degree of control over your AC with relatively low energy costs. High Power, which focuses on high boost and gives you raw speed, letting you close distance very quickly. And Low Consumption, which sacrifices almost every stat for infinite use thanks to their extremely low drain. Quick note, these are practically useless in PvP, so we'll skip over talking about this one. Generators consists of High Output, which keeps your EN full at all times, but punishes you for running out with very low capacity. High Capacity, which gives you a huge tank of energy to work with, but demands more energy management skills. And Balanced, which is a mid-ground between the two. Combinations of these two categories will yield different results depending on the AC used, but can also change depending on your needs, whether it be loadouts, weight, or playstyle. For instance, high excels are overall great no matter what movement choice you like to use, but they work better on lighter ACs which have a higher base speed, and as such, can use every movement option to its fullest extent. If you decide to pair it with the high capacity generator, you'd orient more towards glide boost to close distance, and having a higher capacity means you can continue an attack for a long period of time before needing to stop. It also means you don't have to worry as much when using energy weapons, as long as you occasionally dip out to recover your capacity. However, if you equip a high output generator, you'd be inclined to take advantage of its quick refresh rate to use high boost more with wall jumps, as it uses less energy per boost, maximizing your mobility without requiring you to worry about bottoming out your gen. Unfortunately, there are too many possible situations, scenarios, and corner cases to fully talk about without this video being hours long. So let's look at a few common combinations and general trends. Combining high output with high excel or high power emphasizes quick burst movement with a focus on high boost and wall jumping. High capacity with high excel allows for across the board decent mobility but demands conservation to avoid completely depleting energy. Lighter units prefer high excel, but may choose high powered combined with high output to focus on outmaneuvering with high boost and wall jumps. Heavier units will emphasize use of high powered boosters in high capacity or balanced gens to get around decently while leaving room for energy weapons use. Rushdown types on the other hand, will use high excel to maximize their glide boost mobility and minimize general drain. Here's an example of the thought process when considering what generators and boosters to use. Let's say you want to build a lightweight biped, but you want to have decent defenses and still be able to equip the shotgun pulse gun combo. This type of close quarters playstyle focuses on weapons that do high damage in an instant. This means that you'd want a booster that gives you high control and precision so that you can get in, do damage and get out. In that case, a high XL booster like the BA214 or the BA309 would be what you'd want. To power the unit, you choose to equip the Makabashira Model 3 High Capacity Generator, which gives you plenty of time to approach, evade, find an opening, and then retreat. As it turns out, however, the Model 3 doesn't fit and your AC is overweight. 
Not to worry, most boosters and gens in the same category can be swapped out without too much negative impact. Instead of a Model 3, you put in the Model 1, which nets you less EN recovery and capacity, but still manages to do the job at a fraction of the weight. But let's rewind for a moment. What if we wanted the situation to play out a bit differently? Let's say you weren't so concerned for an AC with good defenses and wanted to put all your stats in speed. Instead of using a higher defense leg, you use one with significantly greater turning and jump performance. You want to push that even further, so instead you choose the Tokonatsu Model 1, a heavy but powerful booster which gives your high boost extra distance, decent control, and decent use of your glide boost. Since you've freed up some weight, you can now also equip the Makibishira Model 3, or even the heavy GA319. Different mixes, different outputs. The combinations may not be endless, but the potential for their use is. Remember that Armored Core is all about experimenting and practicing. So if you find a combo doesn't work, try harder or try again. You're bound to find something that works for you. And that's it for this 5th Bits. Let me know in the comments, any questions you have, or even the booster and generator combos that you prefer and found work for you. If you like this content, please be sure to like or subscribe. It's a good way to let me know I'm doing an awesome job and should keep going. If you know of anyone who's starting out and needs a little advice, be sure to share this video and give them just a little more knowledge to make this game easier for them. Thanks again for watching, until next time.